I declare open this congregation of the University of Sussex. Madam Deputy Mayor, graduands, ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to wel welcome you all formally to this graduation ceremony. A very special welcome to our honored guest, distinguished faculty, and members of the university's professional services. But above all, I welcome you, our graduands, and your families and friends. A very welcome, well, warm welcome also to those who couldn't make it here today and are watching the ceremony on live video stream. This summer, we celebrate the 50th anniversary of graduation at Sussex. This picture, there it is, shows the 38 graduates in 1964. And in the front row, you can see the then Vice Chancellor, Sir John Fulton, in the sort of whitish gown, and to his left, Lord Asa Briggs, the second Vice Chancellor. 38 graduates in 1964, almost 3,000 graduates in 2014. Quite a different picture. As many of you know, the Chancellor is sadly unable to preside over the ceremonies this summer but has sent you all a short video message. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to your graduation ceremony. I am desperately sorry and desperately sad not to be there in person, uh, but I have been required to assist in saving the planet Earth from evil aliens. Uh, they decided to do an invasion in graduation week, which is just incredibly insensitive of evil aliens, but that's what you get with them. Uh, graduation is the highlight of the year for the university, uh, it is for me, but it's your day, the graduands and your families and friends that are here and uh, maybe supporting you from home as well. It's a chance to reflect on the incredible journey that you've been on that has brought you to this momentous day, but it's also mainly a celebration uh, of your efforts and your achievements, both singularly and collectively, as individuals, as graduands, and as families. Now, I hope that uh, you will remain connected to the university in years to come via the Alumni Association. And uh, it's 140,000 strong, and there are you know, fewer better resources than yourselves to future generations of students coming to Sussex. I usually kind of impart some words of wisdom uh, to you on these occasions, and uh, I will try to do so remotely. Um, this is a quote that has been attributed to various people from uh, Buddhist scriptures, Lao Tse and uh, Margaret Thatcher, Ralph Waldo Emerson, but it goes something like this. Mind your thoughts, because they become words. Mind your words, because they become actions. Mind your actions, because they become character. Mind your character, because that becomes your destiny. It all starts with a thought. Now, I personally believe that what defines us is always what we do next, not just what happened to us, but our next decision, our next choice, reflects who we are. So I hope that your next choice always reflects your humanity and your dignity. And the surest way of holding that firm is to make sure that you express humanity and dignity to others. Uh, the last bit of advice I can give you is um, wear sunscreen. I mean, sun's really strong, and even skin like mine tan, so wear sunscreen. Uh, I wish you remotely uh, love, best wishes, and many congratulations. One of the things that I will miss most about not being there is the amount of kind of love, hugs, and kisses that I get. So. Um, uh, let me say to you that uh, I owe you a kiss or a hug or a handshake if you want it at any point in the future when we meet. I, I, my my uh, uh, transport has just arrived, so uh, I have to go. But uh, yeah, I'll be with you in a minute, Doctor. Have a wonderful day.
for those of you who are not um, enthusiastic followers of Doctor Who, and I'm sure there must be none in the audience, um, Sanjeev is filming in Cardiff um, Doctor Who episodes. So, as he said, uh, graduation is one of the highlights of the academic year and is a time when we on stage and you out there in the auditorium can truly indulge in our graduate success. This is a day of celebration, one where you mark a significant achievement in your life, and it's a great honour and privilege for us to be able to share in the happiness of this day. The University of Sussex is a unique institution. Its campus is surrounded by the beautiful South Downs National Park, and yet it is just a few minutes from the centre of one of the loveliest and possibly coolest of Britain's cities, Brighton. Sussex is the only university in the south of England that gets into the top ten for its nightlife. There, mums and dads, the secret is out. But the thing that really makes uh, the University of Sussex special is, of course, you. The results for this graduating class are amongst the best we have ever achieved, with over 75% of our graduates receiving a first or a 2-1. These results are truly excellent and a tribute to all of your hard work and efforts. Many of you will continue on in higher education, some at Sussex and some at other universities. Others will enter the world of work and embark on what we hope will be happy and successful careers. For last year's graduating class, the destination survey results showed that 96% are either in work or in education. Last week, we had formal confirmation that Sussex was placed fourth in the United Kingdom in the Employability League table. This is a fantastic achievement, and we hope and expect that the results for this year's graduates will be at least as good. For most of you, perhaps even all of you, getting here today has been at least in part a tough journey. Essay deadlines to meet, experiments to conduct, dissertations to write, final year projects to complete, exams to pass, theses to defend, long late-night discussions on the meaning of life, and the occasional late night out in town. Many of you will have faced personal challenges, and families and partners have made significant sacrifices to support you. We warmly thank all of those who have helped you achieve today's success. Graduates and lecturers, a round of applause for families and friends. Many of you here today will have come to Sussex from overseas, and I want to say a few words especially to you. Our university would be a very different place without you, and we thank you for your contribution to making the University of Sussex such a diverse and vibrant place to be. A place where students and staff from across the world work and play together and learn to live together. Although graduation has its formal aspects, you may have noticed that we have made a little bit of an effort and dressed up for the occasion, it is also a time to relax, have fun, and do all you possibly can to embarrass your loved ones as they walk, run, dance, trip across the stage. And the Chancellor, if, he's, would he, if he were here, would insist. And he would say, remember, graduates, as yet you do not have your degree. Whether it is conferred or not at the end of the ceremony will depend entirely on how much love you show, in this occasion, your head of school when you come up on stage. <laughs> and I'll be checking. So once again, very many congratulations on your outstanding achievements, and I really hope you enjoy the ceremony and the rest of the day. Thank you. I call upon the Deputy Head of the School of Law, Politics and Sociology, Professor Heather Keating. Vice-Chancellor, 
I will now present to you graduands from the School of Law, Politics and Sociology for the degree of Bachelor of Arts in History and Politics. Shadman Ahmed. Robin Andrews. Eleonora Azomani. Yon Bernard. Marie Button. Jessica Coffey. Jake Flynn. Sandy Howlett. Nastasia Kolakovich. Petrit Kosova. Anna Miles. <laughs> Kieran Pandya. <laughs> Scott Partridge. <laughs> Brandon Perry. Caitlin Roper. <laughs> Stephanie Shepherd. <laughs> Lydia Snodden. <laughs> Roberta Waif. Natasha Wilson. <laughs> For history and sociology, Sophie Anscombe. <laughs> Catherine Ashton Russian. <laughs> Tony Cabell. Geraint Harris. <laughs> Kai Horn. <laughs> Abby Martin. <laughs> Claire McDonough. Rachel Welsh. <laughs> Rihanna Wims. <laughs> Gabrielle Gore. <laughs> For politics, Aubrey Allegretti. Alexandra Bernard, Gabrielle Blazer, Matthew Borton, James Caird.
Ben Cowdock. Also jointly awarded the prize for the best dissertation in politics, Michelle Cruikshank. <laughs> also jointly awarded the best prize for, sorry, the prize for the best dissertation in politics, Rihanna Gargiulo. <laughs> Constance Gero. Joshua Gordon. Benjamin Halton. Elizabeth Horrocks. Also awarded the prize for the best contribution to politics, Bethan Hunt. <laughs> Victoria Lloyd. <laughs> Flora McLean. Nabil and Yusop. <laughs> Lucy Ortil. <laughs> Melissa Reeves. <laughs> Victoria Spencer. Sam Stevenson. <laughs> Rebecca Steventon. <laughs> For Politics and Contemporary European Studies, Joshua Chesterman. <laughs> For Politics and French, Anya Martin. For Politics and International Relations, Thomas Byrne. <laughs> Louisa Cardani. <laughs> also awarded the prize for Outstanding Academic Achievement in Politics, Alexis Komnenos. <laughs> Timothy Dwyer. <laughs> James Galland Jones. <laughs> Sylvie Hahn. <laughs> Ludovico Lazaretti. Anna McEwen. Charlotte Nichols. Simona Paliulite. Fabian Papa. Lucia Shupley. <laughs> Daniela Sepulveda. <laughs> Gabriel Weber. <laughs> Emily Atwell Jones.
Letitia Egan. Nicholas Godshaw. Miranda Hughes. Martin Nash. Mark Sweeney. Emily Wood. For politics and sociology, John Bax. Jihan. For sociology, also awarded the prize for the best sociology project, Alexandra Aldridge. <laughs> Tonye Babado. Elsie Barker. <laughs> Louise Beach. <laughs> Megan Bond. <laughs> Amy Bracewell. Chelsea Bright. <laughs> Rihanna Coleman. <laughs> Jessica De Simone. <laughs> Robert Down. Rosie Emery. <laughs> Eloise Irwin. <laughs> Michael Goodman. <laughs> Francesca Hammond. Maria Hansen. <laughs> Augustus Harding. <laughs> Victoria Hollison. <laughs> Sousa Holmes. Danielle Hope. <laughs> Liam Hughes. <laughs> Rosemary Hyam. <laughs> Sarah Kennywell. Anna Kukla. <laughs> Ella Matthews. <laughs> Jessica Midgley. <laughs> Naomi Misson. Ella Parker. <laughs> Ian.
Isabel Pilling. John Poole. Lauren Porter. Louise Prentice. Letitia Rackett. Rebecca Reynolds. <laughs> Jemima Ricks. <laughs> Amy Sargent. <laughs> Anna Schmid. Grace Sharpling. <laughs> Lucy Sherwood. <laughs> Sarah Fair. <laughs> Elise West. Sophia Weston. <laughs> Bethany White. <laughs> Lainey White. <laughs> For Sociology and Cultural Studies, Charlene Ore. Jenny Butcher. Jenny Layton. Charlotte Maxted. Also awarded the Prize of Outstanding Academic Achievement in 2014, Saskia Wilkes. For Sociology and French, Stephanie Farrell. For Sociology and International Development, Freya Evans. Elizabeth Jump. Masi Chaba Mabizela. <laughs> Maura Morrison. <laughs> Fergus Rees Gildia. <laughs> Anne Van Buren. For Sociology and Media Studies, Adaniki Aliu. <laughs> also jointly awarded the prize for Best Media Studies Dissertation, Karina Jakobsdotter. Also jointly awarded the prize for best media studies dissertation, Penelope Lunn. <laughs> Greg Rutnam. <laughs> Vice Chancellor, this concludes the first half of the list of graduands from the School of Law, Politics and Sociology.
I call upon Stephen Shute, the head of the School of Law, Politics and Sociology, to present Dame Jill Matheson. Vice-Chancellor, Dame Jill Matheson is one of the world's most distinguished professional statisticians. From September 2009 to June 2014, she was the United Kingdom's national statistician, a post which carries with it permanent secretary status in the civil service. As national statistician, Jill was principal advisor on official statistics to the government. She was also head of the Office for National Statistics, chief executive of the UK Statistics Authority, and head of the government statistical service. In these roles, Dame Jill had responsibility for all official government statistics, with several thousand people working for her. She also served as chair of the OECD's Committee on Statistics and chair of the United Nations Statistical Commission. She is widely admired, both nationally and internationally, across government and in the professional statistical community, for her leadership skills and her ability to communicate effectively to a wide variety of different audiences. She has that rare gift to make the complex comprehensible and to transmit her enthusiasm for her subject and her heartfelt belief that statistics are not only important, but can be fun too. Like so many successful people, Jill started her career as a Sussex graduate. She read sociology at Sussex in the early 1970s. She relished her time at the university, not only embracing the curriculum and formal teaching that the university had to offer, but also engaging in the student activism that so characterized that time, including challenging the then Vice-Chancellor, Professor Asa Briggs, over the burning issue of the moment, a worry that the university held secret files on its students. She also recalls living in Sussex student accommodation in Brighton when part of the West Pier collapsed in a storm in the middle of the night. Jill graduated with a BA honours degree in sociology in 1975. On leaving Sussex, she immediately began her career as a professional statistician. Her first post was in the Office for Population Censuses and Surveys. After that, she worked as an analyst, researcher and project manager for, a, for various important social surveys. Further advancement came in the late 1990s, when she was appointed Deputy Director in the Office for National Statistics. Following several roles at directorial level, she was appointed Director General for Statistics Delivery in the ONS in 2008. And in 2009, she took up office as the UK's National Statistician. Throughout her career, Jill has received many honours. In 2001, she was elected a Fellow of the Academy of Learned Societies in Social Science. She is also a fellow of the Royal Statistical, uh, St St Statistical Association and the Social Research Association. In the Queen's birthday honour list in June this year, she was made a, made a Dame Commander of the Order of the Bath for services to government statistics. Although Jill decided to retire as national statistician some 10 days or so ago, we should not expect her to be idle. As well as spending time with her family, Jill enjoys motorcycling and sport, particularly cricket and football. A season ticket at Derby County Football Club, she will be clearly smarting at their recent loss to Queen's Park Rangers in the championship promotion playoff final at Wembley. Vice-Chancellor, I present to you for the degree of Doctor of Science honoris causa, Dame Jill Matteson.
By the authority of Senate and Council of the University, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Science honoris causa. Many congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Vice Chancellor, Professor Shute, um, it's, a, it's a real honour, of course, to be here. It's also a great uh, privilege and a pleasure. Uh, when I was coming in and saw you all having your photographs taken outside on the lawn, I remember my own graduation ceremony on that very lawn in this building um, in 1975. Um, I did actually find a photograph of myself in 1975 in my mortarboard and my gown, like you have, and I decided that the 1975 clothes underneath um, were too embarrassing for me to show you. <laughs> actually, and now they've put me in bright yellow. <laughs> I feel a bit like uh, I should be marshalling at the Tour de France this week. Um, but um, my, these, these two degrees um, that I now have from Sussex, they, they bookend a 39-year career in statistics, which, as Stephen said in his introduction, has been fun. Um, and it's been a passion of mine um, to make statistics interesting and understandable. And the property of all of us, not just the property of mathematicians on the one hand or politicians on the other. So if you'll forgive me, just a few words about statistics, and then I'll come back to my time at Sussex. During my career, I've seen the recognition of the importance of statistics grow. They are now central to our national democratic conversation. If you doubt it, you only had to listen to the Vice Chancellor's speech this afternoon, where he was quoting statistics. Very honourable, excellent statistics. I was pleased to hear about the, uh, the employability of Sussex graduates. But statistics, and the same is true of every aspect of um, our national life, whether it's Scottish independence or the performance of the economy or the, um, the growth in inequality. All of those debates are informed by statistics. Um, and I was amused, some of you will have heard this, when Hal Varian, who is the chief economist at Google, described statistics as the sexy profession for the next decade. You might wonder, therefore, why I've decided to retire. <laughs> Actually, I could have told him, in fact, I did tell him, that I've known that for a long time. It's just that not many other people did. Now you all do. So I hope that you too will share my passion for the subject. And again, um, something that goes back to my time at Sussex, there is no more interdisciplinary subject than statistics. Everybody uses them and on occasion misuses them. Every year of my career, I've grown more and more conscious of what an excellent and what an appropriate education I had reading sociology at Sussex. It's not enough in my career just to get your sums right, although that does help. Um, the trick is knowing the questions to ask and what the answers might mean for us all. And I say all because if I allow myself a moment's pride, um, it's a change in the position of ONS, my own organisation, over the past 10 years. A new Act of Parliament gave us greater independence and said that statistics should be collected, and this is in statute, for the public good. Not just for the good of ministers or for the opposition, but for everyone. Better to understand ourselves, our communities and our national purpose. And, of course, to hold politicians to account. I was always struck by Sussex's internationalism, and it's the same for statistics. Stephen again mentioned that in the, in the introduction. Countries are increasingly judged by the quality of their national statistics and the openness of their governance. How, well, how do you know that the statistics being produced are true? How do you know that the statistics that Professor Farthing quoted are true? They are, because of course he wouldn't quote them if they weren't. Um, but that's a question that you should be asking. Don't just leave that question to politicians. Don't just leave it to professional statisticians. It's a question for all of us. I hope that you had, at your time at Sussex, as good a time as I certainly had. 
Um, my cohorts of students, uh, I know, were um, uh, seen as fairly truculent and argumentative at times. Um, but actually, I secretly revered many of my teachers at the time. It was at Sussex that I was first formally taught statistics, where I made some great lifelong friends, and where the Seagulls became my second team after Derby County. So um, I was actually torn. Not only did we lose the playoff final to Queen's Park Rangers, we hammered Brighton and Hove in the semi-final. <laughs> Um, I actually envy you the Amex Stadium right opposite the campus now because I had to make a very difficult and tedious trip to the old Coldstone ground in, in, uh, in Hove. It was also at Sussex that I developed my taste for practical politics. Um, so somehow I managed to balance the need to write essays with the, what seemed like the more urgent task of bringing down the Pinochet, Pinochet regime in Chile. At my job interview at ONS, shortly after I graduated, I was asked what I thought of a proposal, which in the, much in the news at the time, to withhold degrees from students who were in debt to their institutions. I argued vehemently that non-academic offences shouldn't be punished academically. Um, little did they know that the reason for my vehemence was that I'd been on rent strike for the last 12 months of my time at Sussex. But, Vice-Chancellor, the debt has been paid, so I can accept this. I hope um, your time at Sussex will help you as much as it helped me and my lot. I noticed in the late 1970s how many Sussex graduates were showing up in my pr profession and in the civil service, and I wondered why. Ah, said my boss at the time, they can hold an argument. So don't fret if you don't yet know what you want to do. Find what excites you, what satisfies you, and what chimes with your values, and stick to it. Don't let anyone tell you that you can't make a difference, because you can, and the strengths that you have got from here will carry you a long way. So thank you once again for the great honour of this degree. I can't adequately say how much it means to me, but I wish the university, all its staff, and all its students, um, all of those of you who are graduating, all the best for the future. Thank you. I call upon the Deputy Head of the School of Law, Politics and Sociology, Professor Heather Keating. Vice-Chancellor, for the degree of Bachelor of Laws, Alexander Adamu. Olu Keodi Adiran. Malalai Ahmadi. Tamara Al Kayat. Al Al Kayumi. Jamel Anderson. <laughs> Hamza Enishi. <laughs> Asim Ayub. <laughs> Omar Beg. Carl Booz. Annabelle Burt. Jessica Byrne. Woo! 
Richard Clark. <laughs> Hannah Coggins. Peter, Peter Collins, <laughs> Natasha Comrie, <laughs> Matthew Cresser, Emily Crooks, <laughs> Stephanie Crowther, <laughs> Sadie Cunningham, <laughs> Unguyen Dao. Davis, <laughs> Louise de Souza, Deakins, <laughs> Alison Dean, <laughs> Ben Dosantis, <laughs> Hassem Dauran. Robin Edwards, <laughs> Oyana Estafu, <laughs> Amina Elshax, <laughs> Cecilia Essie Robin Finnegan, <laughs> Liana Fitzgerald, <laughs> Jack Fox, <laughs> Effie Organe Jere. Ronnie Gorham, <laughs> Constantina Guvelli, <laughs> Oliver Green, <laughs> Emily Greenia. Dominic Griffin, <laughs> Andreas Hatcher Christophus, <laughs> John Hamlin, <laughs> Gavin Harrison.
Lucy Hartland. <laughs> Benjamin Henderson. <laughs> Jack Horlock. Green Horn Francesca Hoy Te Hu Hadja Husseini Anna Jode <laughs> Ola Wesigun Johnson <laughs> Tanith Jones Constantinus Kalajuropoulos <laughs> Malachi Kazmi <laughs> Humera Kalik <laughs> Ali Khan Alexandra Koshik <laughs> Miriam Lalani <laughs> Tammy Lay <laughs> Joanne Lee Raymond Liu <laughs> Sharon Onlamma <laughs> Claire McNally Ashar Malik Subain Malik Dawid Malinowski Rosie Mason Perks Ella Morn James McAtomney Bryony McKay Rhiannon Miller Victoria Moore <laughs> Keisha Morant <laughs> Jenna Morris <laughs> and Chali Muralitharan. Bernadette Nedunati <laughs> Phoebe 
O'Toole. <laughs> Chibawesi Ogbonia. <laughs> Adi Yusin Sole Olin Ipekel. Chelsea Osborne. <laughs> Musope Ozibona. <laughs> Oluwezi Otebeyi. <laughs> Kennedy Owiti. Maria Pachomio. <laughs> Tatiana Pantu. <laughs> Frederick Paulick. <laughs> Henry Perrins. Robin Pickard. Jason Pinkerton. Jennifer Pinto. Etisham Kadir. Shabnam Rabar. <laughs> Aurelia Rankovet. <laughs> Dan Relton. Katie Riches. <laughs> Callum Roberts. <laughs> Sean Rushforth. <laughs> Laura Sanders. Charles Sayer. <laughs> also jointly awarded the Marcus Hayes Prize for the best final year essay in commercial law, Lucy Sellen. Ahmad Shabab. <laughs> Ella Shanks. <laughs> Douglas Sharman. Also jointly awarded the Marcus Hayes Prize for the best final year essay in commercial law and the prize for the best overall student in law, Alicia Smith. <laughs> Natalie Sodden. Aaron Soki. (laughs) 
Rebecca Spence. Carly Sturgis. Hoi Tang. Temple. <laughs> Miriam Tenga. <laughs> Zoe Thomason. <laughs> Andreas Flasivulu. Charlotte Travers. <laughs> Paula Verhoof. <laughs> Anchit Verma. <laughs> Pantelis Vorkas. Sophie Wallace. Amy Warren. Jessamy Warren. Elizabeth Watson. Sean Webber. <laughs> Carl Wheeler. <laughs> Harrison White. Jake Wilkie. <laughs> Alexander Wong. <laughs> Sing Wong. Alexandra Wu. James Yates. For law graduate entry, Hamad Al Kabi. Mariana Anastasio. <laughs> Tanya Zuba. <laughs> Dennis Genshenza. Also awarded the Sweet and Maxwell Prize for Best Performance in Company Law and the Prize for Best Final Year Student, James Hurst. <laughs> Ray Luckyram. Stephanis Marakis. <laughs> Anna.
Andak Nergis. <laughs> Veronica Ryan. <laughs> Nora Sultan. <laughs> Anouk Van Balenvalta. Nicoletta Vanezu. <laughs> For Law and Business, Ilaria Minessa. <laughs> For Law with American Studies, Emily Fox. <laughs> Janat. Kiwanuka <laughs> Camilla Kravitz <laughs> Natalie Lawrence Daniel Lovett. <laughs> For Law with Business, Charlotte Anderson. <laughs> Laura Ballard. Tatum Boteng. <laughs> Alicia Gibson. Jarrah <laughs> Dora Sekfi <laughs> For Law with Contemporary European Studies with a Study Abroad Year, Rosemary Brown. For Law with French, Maria Olenikova. Well done, well done. For Law with German, also awarded the Peggotty Freeman Memorial Prize for exceptional achievement during a period of study or work abroad in Europe, Chiara McCrory. For Law with International Relations, Medel Aman Geldiev. <laughs> Amrita Chima. <laughs> Simone Koleko. Gintare Diglight. <laughs> Nicholas Georgiou. <laughs> Mira Canon Athene.
Sanchia Mantero. <laughs> Taylor McManus. <laughs> Stacy Musimbe. Sophie Vassen Klaus Fensler Jake Wright For Law with Politics, Nathaniel Cobran. <laughs> Miriam G. <laughs> Henry Stockley. <laughs> For Law with a Study Abroad Year, Natalie Crisp. Collins, Kaya Matten. Yeah. Emma Locking. Yeah. Francis McCormack. Yeah. Lydia Morris. For the degree of Master of Arts in Corruption and Governance, Adrian Platt. <laughs> For Gender Studies, Madalizzo Anastasia Comelete. <laughs> For the degree of Masters of Law in Criminal Law and Criminal Justice, Julia Winstone. For international trade law, Pimpichea within Watch Alawati. <laughs> Vice Chancellor, I will now present to you for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, Khalid Al Hayaf. Christopher Buttigieg. Jane Clayden. Sarah Sarah Hamilton Theodora Trunzu, Theodora Trunzu.
Charlotte Morris. Marco Stoyic. <laughs> Vice Chancellor, this concludes the list of graduands from the School of Law, Politics and Sociology. I call upon Professor Dan Huff, the director of the Sussex Centre for the Study of Corruption. Wait for it. <laughs> to present Professor Mark Piet. Vice Chancellor, ladies, gentlemen, folks. Um, when I was given the honour of introducing Mark today, I was told that I had precisely three minutes in which to do it. That, believe me, is, is a pretty exceptionally, uh, an exceptionally tough thing to have to do. However, last night, as I guess many of you will have seen, the German national football team managed to score three goals against Brazil in Brazil in 179 seconds. <laughs> if they can make three minutes count pretty spectacularly, then fingers crossed, so can I. Since 1993, Professor Mark Piet has been Professor of Criminal Law and Criminology at the University of Basel. He's also managed to have arguably the most high profile and substantive impact on the practical world of anti-corruption of any academic anywhere. This, as I'm sure you'll agree, is no mean feat. To give this some context, up until recently, the academic analysis of corruption was next to non-existent. Corruption, in the Western world at least, was seen largely as an anomaly. When it happened, it was bad apples. You got rid of them and you carried on pretty much as you were. Through the 1990s, this changed. And it changed in no small part thanks to the efforts of people such as Professor Mark Piet. This doesn't, of course, mean that corruption no longer happens. British MPs may still have claimed expenses for cleaning their moats or building their duck houses. Um, businesses may still make facilitation payments, inverted commas, to win contracts, but the culture within which they do this has changed irredeemably. And it's thanks to the efforts of people such as Mark that this has happened. Between 1989 and 1993, Professor Piet was head of section um, at the Swiss Ministry of Justice and Police. In this role, he drafted legislation against money laundering, organised crime, drug abuse, corruption, and the confiscation of assets. Starting in the mid-1990s, Professor Piet began to take on a range of functions at the international level. He has, for example, chaired the OECD's Working Group on Bribery in International Business Transactions, an organisation that has a, had a wide and profound impact on national anti-corruption legislation um, across the world, including here in the UK. Indeed, next time uh, any of you have to go on courses to make sure you're compliant with the, uh, the UK Bribery Act, you can think of him. Um, alongside his groundbreaking work with the OECD, it was in the spring of 2004 that he was appointed by the UN Secretary General to the Independent Inquiry Committee into the Iraq Oil for Food Programme. More recently, in autumn 2008, 
Professor Piet was made a member of the Integrity Advisory Board of the World Bank Group, advising uh, uh, the President of the Bank and the Audit Committee on integrity issues. One trick pony, he clearly is not. Although Professor Piet has been active in a wide range of fields that I can't possibly to do justice to here, he's perhaps best known for crossing swords with FIFA Chairman uh, Sepp Blatter. Um, when he was appointed, yeah, feel free to boo or whatever you, you feel appropriate, um, <laughs> when appointed to advise FIFA on how best to tackle integrity issues in its own governance framework. And anyone who goes eye to eye with someone like Seth Blatter on his stewardship of the beautiful game um, is certainly doing good in my book. Ultimately, Mark had some small successes in trying to persuade FIFA to reform, but his, revelation about, his revelations uh, um, about FIFA's inadequacies ultimately saw him turn his back on both FIFA and Sepp Blatter with a line that I particularly like, and I quote, I would not take on this sort of task again in such a circus where the various factions attack each other all the time, end quote. In short, Professor Mark Piet has been at the forefront of, tackling, uh, of taking practical attempts to take corruption forward, uh, take anti-corruption forward, crikey, Freudian slip there. <laughs> Sorry, Mark, I've outed you there. Um, <laughs> he, has helped genu uh, he has helped affect genuine policy change, and he's not been scared to face down some pretty big fish. His achievements in this field are subsequently hard to match. It's with that in mind, Vice-Chancellor, that I present to you for the degree of Doctor of Laws, Honoris Causa, Professor Mark Piet. By the authority of Senate and the Council of the University, I confer upon you the degree Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa. Many congratulations. Thank you very much. Vice Chancellor, dear colleagues and friends, I am not yet a student of Sussex, as you've heard, but I'm about to become one. I admire Britain, in particular for the ability of the British to do something in spite of their immediate inclinations. I found out some six years ago when I was in deep trouble some of you might remember the BAE crisis, those allegations of corruption in connection with a large uh, sale of fighter planes um, to Saudi Arabia. Imagine, here is an obnoxious foreigner publicly causing trouble because the prime minister of a sovereign country decides to advise the British judiciary to close a criminal investigation, believing that this is in the best interest of his country and his workforce. A heated and embarrassing public exchange followed uh, the closing of the investigation into the famous Al Yamama contract. It went as far as an official call for the impeachment of this loud Swiss professor chairing the OECD's anti-corruption body. But ultimately, as you might know, Britain had to enact the toughest legislation on corruption in the world. Maybe that is the legacy of that episode. And yet, I think what is spectacular for me is that one of the most prestigious universities of this country turns around, demonstrates his independence, and awards that foreign professor an honorary doctorate. I find this impressive. I could, of course, be mistaken um, maybe it was for my attempted services in the recognition, in the reorganization, sorry, of FIFA. Well, 
looking at the limited success so far, I don't think this is uh, really likely. And besides, please, if you look at that picture, make sure that you give the prize to the right person. Um, the one on the left has already got his prizes. At any rate, <clears throat> at any rate, I am profoundly grateful to Sussex University for this honor, and I am proud to have benefited from the British education system exactly furthering this independence of mind. Even in earlier years, as you can tell from this picture, when between five and ten, I was at the altering and preparatory school for boys. Setting all this aside, I'm looking forward to cooperating in the near future with the Sussex Center of the Study of Corruption. Thank you very much. Vice-Chancellor, I present to you graduates who were unable to graduate with their school. For the degree of Bachelor of Arts in International Relations and Development, Edward Danks. For the degree of Bachelor of Laws, Mickey Shee. Vice-Chancellor, all the graduates have now been presented at the ceremony, and the moment has come for the formal conferral of degrees of the University of Sussex. I therefore ask you to confer their degrees on those presented at this ceremony and to the other graduates who have, have indicated their wish to graduate in absentia. I confer degrees on all those referred to by the Deputy Vice-Chancellor. Congratulations. Well, you made it. Well done. What a performance. And well done, mums and dads and families and friends. You were really embarrassing. <laughs> Fantastic performance. As I'm sure you're aware, graduates, uh, many people have helped you along the way to make today a reality. I'd like to offer my special thanks to families and friends for the support that you have given, your sons and daughters, perhaps your partners, your spouses, and in some cases, parents and other family members during their time at Sussex. We are aware that many of you will have made great sacrifices to help your loved ones get to this point today, and we offer you our sincere thanks. Graduates, I think you should thank each other for the friendship and mutual support that you will have experienced during your time at Sussex. For though graduation is a day of celebration, for some of you, there may be moments of sadness, especially parting from close friends, your flatmates and classmates, some of whom may be traveling back home many thousands of miles away. On the other hand, there may be the odd colleague that you're glad to see the back of. <laughs> Finally, there is another group of people that have helped you get here today. And they are your lecturers, supervisors, and mentors, many of whom are celebrating with you here up on the stage. Can I invite you to show them in the usual way how much you appreciate the help that they have given you?
Come on, stand up. And I'd like just to mention one particular person, Mary Lee, Law Lecturer of the Year. So what does the future hold? Some of you, I know, have the future well mapped out. Congratulations to those who've already secured jobs in your chosen area of work, and good luck to those who are still in the job-seeking process, or who have just not made up their minds what they want to do next. Pushing the pause button and taking some time to reflect is not a bad thing, providing it doesn't go on too long. <laughs> Congratulations to those of you who've decided to proceed directly into postgraduate studies. I hope that some of you have been able to take advantage of the new Sussex Graduate Scholarships, which are available to all Sussex graduates who achieve a first or a 2-1 in their undergraduate honours degree. And finally, I want to thank again our international students for being such an important part of the Sussex family. We welcome you to Sussex as highly valued guests, certainly not as immigrants, as our Home Office would still insist you are. You make a vital intellectual contribution to our university and through your presence create a global community on campus. After graduation, we believe you are our best ambassadors when you return home to your own country. Now, at this point in the ceremony, the Chancellor would normally offer you some more homespun advice along the lines that he did in his uh, video. One of his favourites is that it's, and he would say this, okay to make mistakes. That's normal. But just, just don't keep making the same mistake again and again and again. That's plain stupid. He also advises you to eat more salad. And he says, if you boil your vegetables, never throw the water away, make it into soup. I shall resist the temptation to add to this list. I suspect you get enough advice from a variety of sources, perhaps too much at times. The one thing I would say is never let go of your dreams. Your dreams are yours, and no one should take them away from you. They don't always come true immediately, but with vision, courage, and persistence, you can make dreams come true. I hope that your experiences at Sussex have extended way beyond the limits of your formal degree studies and that they will have gone some way to help you prepare for the future. We are fully aware of the financial sacrifice that you have made to get here today. But remember in those darker, gloomier moments that the evidence is clear. Statistics. UK graduates in the long run are happier healthier and wealthier than their peers who did not have the advantage of a university degree. I hope also that you will be able to take our values such as freedom, tolerance, equality, social responsibility and honesty forward into the next stage of your life. I would ask you to remember the multinational community that you have created here at Sussex and build on those experiences as you go out into the wider world. Sadly, we still live in a world where poverty, catastrophe, and conflict abound. We all have the responsibility to play our part to promote societal change. And I look to you and your Sussex experience to go out in the world and really make a difference. One of the things I've learned since I've been at Sussex is that people seem to like it better the less I speak. And often at graduation, see, somebody agrees, Absolutely right. Um, I sometimes try and encapsulate some ideas in a short video, and this time we're going to hear student voices reflecting on their Sussex experience 
considering the future and sending you a farewell message. Emotional. <laughs> um, nervous. Terrified. Proud. Excited. Nervous. Very, very emotional. Very scared. <laughs> I would say it was fantastic. Proud. On my first day at university, I was really eager to get going. The pier. The diversity of the people who live here. Good people, good weather. When the sun's out, you just can't wait it. The rain. <laughs> Comedy festival. The beach. Brighton as a city. I like the idea of multiculturalism, but also I like the, the nightlife. It's really beautiful. Comprehensive. Really high standard. Excellent. Amazing. Crazy. Excellent. Pushing the boundaries, but being applied in the real world. It's excellent. It's, it's, the research quality is so good. It's so good. Uh, I would describe the academic experience at Sussex as rewarding. One rule. Racing a car that we designed at Silverstone. Child care centre. A reopening of the Attenborough Centre. The family accommodation. The refurbishment of the undergraduate physics labs. Biggest success this year has been winning varsity, in which we beat Brighton University in almost all the sporting events we played them at over the course of the day. <laughs> Exploring other culture. Coping with stress. To work with a group of people. Practical skills I need for my career. You know, struggling with our own fears. How to deal with a lot of different people. Respecting different cultures and values. It just has taught me just to stay strong whatever happens. You just have to carry on doing what you love. Uh, the big life lesson I learned at uni is that money disappears surprisingly quickly. Hopeful. Relieved. Uh, and excited and happy. Begging not to trip up. Encourage one to push their boundaries. I just hope I'm not the one that falls. Accomplishment. Yeah, on my graduation day, I will feel sad. Like every adventure will come to an end. Congratulations, graduates. The world is your oyster, and if you can see, it's not the greatest day, but there's always silver linings to aim for, so just try your best, and it'll always come through. Congratulations to all of my colleagues graduating today. What's coming next is going to be a blast. Well done, guys. You smashed it. Congratulations to all graduates and also parents. It's the end of our journey, but it's the beginning of our future. Congratulations. <laughs>
for the next stage of your life. My very best wishes to you all. I now declare this congregation closed. <laughs>